forward. Okay. So, well, I guess we'll jump right into it here then. Um, All right. Now, I understand, like, between, uh, you know, everything else you've had on the go, uh, you know, with teaching English and, you know, your family life and, uh, you know, keeping up with your own reviews, that, uh, you know, Shard and Wolfpack have also been keeping on the move since, uh, you know, we last chatted and that they've made some uh, progress since then. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it took me two or three years, I guess, to write the next book, which is called Naughtiest Children. Mm-hmm. And you know, part of that was just because I was I was pretty fed up with my previous publisher, who was way behind on paying me. He wasn't sending royalty statements. I uh, wouldn't respond to email, that kind of stuff. And I I really just didn't want to write a new book and turn it over to him. Yeah. And then you know I thought we had things worked out. We signed new contracts. Um, he made a partial payment. And then he just fell silent again. No money. No communication. So I said, well, screw this, and um, shopped around just a little bit. I mean, one of the first places I went was Grayside Tales. I talked to Dale Murphy there, and he got pretty excited about the possibility of republishing the Werewolf Saga. And so we are doing that, and Murdered by Human Wolves should be out within a week or so. I'm not sure exactly. It was supposed to be out on the full moon of October. <laughs> but uh <laughs> I just looked at page proofs the other day, so we may be a day or so behind. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And so where it is right now, then, like, with the your werewolf saga, um, you know, basically, you know, now dancing in the forest with uh, Graveside uh, Tales as it is. Um, so, I mean, where where does that leave your wolves standing exactly with, you know, with their former stompy ground, uh, you know, scribe press with Nod here and back, et cetera? Like, where, where's your, uh, where do your books stand with them still? I I talked to my agent about what to do, and he advised that I send a letter of termination. And so I did that oh, early last year. And you know, just told him, I'm, you can no longer publish these books. I'm taking the rights back. Uh, as far as where I stand with him, he still owes me several hundred dollars I'm trying to get out of him. I don't know that I'll ever get it. Okay, well, yeah, definitely good luck with that. You You deserve that. Well, thanks. Um, no, I, I also understand, speaking of, of uh, Murder by Human Wolves, uh, you know, I understand that that book, uh, you know, the true story of, of Catherine Cross that inspired that tale, you know, I, I know it, it held a certain uh, significance for you, you know, in both your career and, you know, and personally. Uh, now, besides reaching a greater audience, uh, you know, hopefully with uh, Graveside Tales, um, what other significance might there be regarding its new release with Graveside? Well, um, Graveside is going to revamp and focus only on shapeshifter fiction from here on out. And Murdered by Human Wolves is the first book that they are publishing under this new, um, I don't know, guideline. So, I mean, it's a big deal for them, too. Okay, yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and and speaking of which, as well, with shapeshifters, uh, you know, how did your... Uh, um, your editing efforts uh, with Sky Warrior Books and, and the Werewolf Anthology uh, with them. How did that, uh, you know, how did that book, Tales of the Pack, come about for you? Uh, I was at the uh, FinCon convention down in Dallas, and Maggie Bonham, who owns Sky Warrior Books, was there. And she was telling me about this, the success she was having with anthologies and ebooks and such. And she mentioned wanting to find somebody familiar with werewolves, you know, who kind of had a name in the werewolf subgenre to edit a uh, werewolf anthology for her. I have to admit, I wasn't terribly excited about it, but I thought, you know, this might be fun and be definitely be a new opportunity. And so I agreed to do it. And I, it turned out to be a whole lot of work. <laughs> wasn't necessarily writing on my part. Mm-hmm. But I got to read a lot of good stories, and I think more importantly, I got to see what it's like from the other side of the desk. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, rejecting somebody's work is at least as hard as it is to get a rejection. But you know what they put into it. But you know when it's just not quite there, you you got to tell them no. Yeah. And do you think with your um, with your experience with uh, with the anthology? Uh, you know, do you find that that would, you know, had any kind of impact, do you think, on, on your future uh, writing or anything that you can take from that that might 
uh, you know, kind of play in a different direction with your own writing? Uh, well, I mean, I, I kind of hope not. I'd hate to think that, you know, I've, I've lifted ideas from other people or anything, but um, definitely I got to see shapeshifter ideas that I never would have thought of myself, and so that was interesting. Um, yeah, it, it, and when does it do out? Well? Sorry. Well, I don't know for sure. Um, I sent all the stories to Maggie, and she told me that we were waiting on cover art, and I haven't heard back in a couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm not sure when she's going to have it out. But I mean, I look forward to it. Um, there's one piece in there. It's a large, long piece from uh, Mark Finn, who uh, wrote a biography on Robert E. Howard. And his story, well, he broke all the guidelines, but his print was so good I had to take it. And it, it, his is like 12,000 words, and then there's one that's um, just a little over 300 words. I mean, it's a very eclectic mix. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that as well. Um, now, do you do you have any plans, uh, you know, to produce any more, uh, you know, short fiction of your own? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Um, Graveside wants to do a new edition of Call to the Hunt as well as the other books. And um, there's a a story about the character Holly that I'm very much wanting to write. And it was inspired by I was reading a. Um, Terry C. Johnson book, one of his Titus Bass books, and talked about a wolf attack that happened at one of the mountain men rendezvous. Okay. Got to thinking, well, you know, this Holly character of mine, she would have been in the in North America at that time. And, you know, there's she had reasons for what she would have done. And wouldn't it be interesting if that was her who went through that rendezvous? So, yeah. There's definitely at least that piece of short fiction. But other than that, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of short stories to tell. Uh, I can tell you, I was at FinCon this year, and I was talking to Angeline Hawks and Christopher Fulbright about some of the stuff they're doing. And I'm going to try some, uh, you know, long short story to novella-length fiction in a, in a genre I haven't written in before, and it'll be under a pseudonym. Okay. Well, I know you definitely did very well with, uh, you know, with your novella, your your haunted uh, your haunted house tale. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing that thing from you again. Uh, now to, to kind of I guess switch gears a little bit away from the um, from your uh, your beasties. Uh, you know, considering your uh, you know the critical success that you had with uh, After Obsession, uh, of course your cooperative uh, young adults creation with uh, with Carrie Jones. Um, where do you see that uh, you know particular uh, path taken in your career as, as far as the young adult uh, genre or subgenre? Well, um, I I see that bringing in more money. I mean, <laughs> always good. Uh, yeah, I mean we we reached a large audience, you know, partly because Carrie was already a New York Times bestselling author. Mm-hmm. You know, between the time we we first hooked up and decided to write a book together, and after Obsession actually hitting bookstores, she became a bestseller. So, you know, that was nice to already have that built-in audience. And uh, we've written two more books together. We actually, our agent is still hammering out the details of a contract for a new book. So, you know, unfortunately, I can't say who it's with or tell you anything about it. But okay. there is another Terry Jones, Steve Waddell book that will be coming and we have written a sequel to that one in hopes that it does well. And uh, I've, I've written a couple of young adult books on my own. One of them I kind of put on the back burner after some discussions with my agent. And another one, I, this one's called Afterlife, and I really feel it's one of the best pieces I've done. And my agent has that now, and I'm just kind of waiting to hear back from him. But I enjoy the young adult market. You know, probably because I I work with the target audience every day. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's not all that much different than you know the adult horror genre. It's not like it was when I was in school, where you know young adult meant you know, babysitter clubs or or something like that. <laughs> yep. Honestly, it, it's, the only real difference is you always have a teenage protagonist. Okay. Uh, no, what can you tell me, um, if anything, about uh, about uh, Amaris Prayer? Well, I, I can tell you it's been delayed again. 
um, oh. off to Roy at Bad Moon Books. And basically, he probably still be out by March. Um, other than that, I mean, it was my graduate thesis when I was a grad student at the University of Oklahoma. Hmm. It's about um, an Oklahoma minister, and his church has a mission in Brazil. And he gets word that the mission's been destroyed. And he's kind of an impulsive guy, so he just runs down there to see what's going on. And sure enough, everybody he knows in the in the mission, you know, from his church and from the village itself, they're all dead. But he finds this mysterious naked redhead, hmm. and he he brings her home illegally to continue his mission work with her because she's a childlike, pagan type person, and hmm. he's just he can bring her to the Lord. And uh, it turns out she is somebody quite different than what he expected, and he he's the one who ends up learning something about himself. Oh, so I'm well, still we... excited about it, even though you know I finished this book in 2004. I really wanted to come out. Um, I, I think Bad Moon Books is a good place for it too. Yeah, absolutely. They they produce some pretty good stuff, and uh, you know you. You definitely have my attention at uh, Naked Redhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know she's um, she has no inhibitions when it comes to sex. I can tell you that. Okay, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people are probably uh, you know, going to be looking out for that one then, by the sounds of it. <laughs> I hope so. Um, now, now, speaking of which, and then I guess in a way to kind of go back a little bit to the, um, I guess the young adults crowd here, I. You know, I can't um, not ask this question while I'm talking to the, uh, you know, proverbial wolfman, I suppose. But um, about Twilight, um, I know rumor has it that, uh, you know, they might, uh, you know, branch off their, you know, their beaten path and, you know, possibly do a sequel that's dedicated to just, uh, you know, I guess Jacob and his, uh, his fluffy wolf pack. And, you know, how do you feel about that? I'm sure you, you probably can't wait to see that one, right? I look forward to that as much as I look forward to anything else about Twilight. <laughs> I mean, honestly, before Twilight became, you know, what it is, uh, a fellow teacher loaned me her copy of the book to read. And I got, mm -hmm. I don't know, three or four chapters into it, and I just couldn't take it anymore. So I gave it back, and then, you know, a year or so later, everybody's reading Twilight. So I picked it up again, thinking, okay, maybe I missed something. And this time I got to chapter two and just couldn't take it. So, you know, what, what Stephanie Myers does with Jacob and, and the Wolves, I honestly don't care. If it, mm -hmm. it brings more readers to reading werewolf fiction and some of them eventually find my books, fantastic. But, you know, if, if what they're looking for is Stephanie Myers' style writing, they're not going to find it in my books. Yeah, I mean, it's almost a travesty comparing her stuff to your stuff and, and wondering, well, why the heck isn't yours up on the on the big screen or on more of those, uh, you know, top selling lists as well when you got somebody like Stephanie Myers doing what she's doing, so. Well, thank you. Here, here's hoping for the future. <laughs> We're counting on you, Steve. <laughs> Help us out here. I'm trying. Um, what what else um, you know with everything else that you have on on the go on that I mean I know it's probably really tough to touch on absolutely everything that you've uh, got your hands in or that you're looking to get your hands in for the future but you know is there anything else that um, the we fans of yours um, you know should be aware of that you know might be kind of spread out from behind your muse in the near future I've been so swamped with papers to grade and things like that, but um, I, I actually haven't done much writing at all since school started. But uh, I'm hoping that, you know, if my agent sells after August, I'll do a sequel to that. I, I see that being a trilogy. Um, other than that, I've got this fantasy series that I've worked on off and on for like 15 years. And I, I've been reading the uh, you know Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire series. And it's really making me want to go back to my own fantasy series. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got a young hero who develops over the course of several books, has a lot of adventures. So I, that pro that might be my next project, is to go back and kind of revive that. Okay, awesome. Well, that'd be uh, exciting to see what you do and kind of going in a 
a bit of a different direction as, as far as uh, genre or subgenre goes. Uh, are, are you going to be going more sort of uh, straight edge uh, fantasy with that, or are you always going to have the uh, the horror element involved with it? Well, I mean, the way I'm doing it, it's kind of like uh, the old Robert E. Howard Conan series. That's far you know, there are, are specific segments that are really kind of whole stories by themselves, but then all the pieces fit together for one bigger story. And yeah, definitely, there is, there's going to be some stories where uh, the hero has to go fight some kind of monster. But um, you know, overall, it'll be you know somewhere between Conan and the Lord of the Rings as far as you know the level. It, it there won't be elves. In that way, it'll be more like the Conan series. Okay. Well, that's uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be really exciting to see you going in that new direction then. Well, I mean, fantasy was kind of my first love as far as reading. You know, hmm. something I've always wanted to do is just, it, it's so hard to find something original to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 especially in the with the fantasy realm, I find it's probably just as, you know, even more saturated, I find, than, uh, you know, original horror work. Yeah. yeah I mean, in the, this first book I've written, there's a, one of the segments, uh, the hero, he he has a near-death experience. He gets to see his gods. And then he goes to try to save some people, and he ends up in this, um, uh, if you think, Tarzan, you know, a, a lost city in the jungle. But the uh, the people who run the city are really, they're capturing people and killing them and turning them into zombies to unearth this, this giant idol. And so, mm. you know, he's got to fight reptile people and zombies. Awesome. So it sounds like you've already gotten to work on some of that then. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a, a draft that I've had done for a long time. It's just, it, it's kind of short. I need to go in and flesh it out. Okay, very cool. Uh, aside from aside from that, then, was there anything else that, uh, that you wanted to, to plug that we might not have uh, covered up to this point? Oh, let's see. Um... Not yet. I mean, well, can we talk about the After Obsession paperback? Uh, yeah, you'd mentioned that before. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got a date. It's supposed to be out on November 13th. So that'll be there. Uh, well, I did hear from Roy from Bad Moon Books. You know, he he said the Amara Strider would be out by March. He did okay. ask for an updated manuscript. So that's still in the works. Uh, and what about Murder by Human Wolves as well? Um, okay. The first one that came out from Graveside is that still is that uh, is that something we can expect to see extremely soon? Uh, I think so. I mean, I, I don't have copies yet, but it is available for order on their website now. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having copies in my hand. <laughs> uh, I don't know that it's actually gone to press or if it's a pre-order type thing, but you can go to the Graveside Tales website and place an order for it. It's on sale right now, too, for $8 rather than the $10 cover price. That's a pretty good deal. I'll definitely make sure that I, I post up a link so that all the uh, Dark Fight readers can uh, check that out and, and start buying it up and you know start getting attached for the next two of them that are going to be coming out through, uh, through Graveside. Well, I appreciate it. So Absolutely. And hey, thanks very much again uh, for all the time. I really appreciate that as well, Steve. Well, thank you. I appreciate you calling. And a special thank you to all you Dark Bite readers for digging in and checking us out. With luck, this marks the first in what I hope will become an ongoing series of audio interviews from your favorite creators of dark and fantastic matter that matters most to you. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and please do click on the link below for a teaser narration of Shara from Steve Waddell's upcoming audiobook from Graveside Tales, the first to be launched from the Werewolf Saga. Until next time, my fellow fiends, stay hungry and stay dark. Oh! <laughs>